uh, process of, of it's the segments or the voicing of each uh, how much how percent how much the percentage of a signal was voice or unvoiced and for this uh, project in particular we just focus on uh, fundamental frequency that uh, shouldn't be very dif different uh, for each instance of of snoring in a single patient however uh, the aim uh, like in a future is to look for patterns instead of descriptors or a particular event okay so it is mainly in the um, attenuation of the sound that means amplitude but not the characteristic of the sound in frequency or any other mm -hmm. characteristic mm -hmm. oh, okay thank you very much for your answer to it anyone would like to ask something about this paper either raising your hand or you can use the chat also. OK, so if there are no more questions, thank you very much again, Hudi. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. OK, uh, if we have our third presenter, now we can continue with our third paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is with Ana Laura Casarín. Ana Laura, can you share your presentation, please? Excellent, we can see it. OK, can you change the slide just to make sure that we are going to be able to change the slide correctly? Mm. Excellent, yes. OK, thank you. Mm. OK. So let's continue with our second presentation in this session. And uh, the name of the paper is Phoniatric System Based or Acoustical Analysis for Early Detection of Anomalies in Voice Production. And it's going to be presented by Ana Laura Casarín. All yours, Ana Laura. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ana Laura Casarín, and I'm going to present the work entitled Phoniatric System Based on Acoustical Analysis for Early Detection of Anomalies in Voice Production. Okay. Uh, the presentation will take the order present in this slide, starting with the object of the work developed. Okay. Um, the aim of this paper it's to present a system based on sound analysis for the early detection of anomalies on the voice and also a systemat systematic review of parameters and classifiers under identical conditions has been part of this phoniatric system. And uh, as an introduction, the voice is the main means of communication and it most frequently use that as a work tool and less to the inc incidence of between 3 and 9% of uh, various pathologies that affect the general population. And among the, the most affected working age population are teachers, uh, salespeople, speakers, actors, singers, and announcers, among others, and who use the voice as a working tool. And in addition to before mentioned, the use of the voice without proper training and care um, can cause persistent problems and injury and the diagnosis that is issued in different institutions of speech medicine is based fundamentally on a set of clinical studies based on protocols that include uh, invasive techniques, uh, causing discomfort, fear, and sometimes a injury to, to patients. 
And uh, as a part of the state of, of art for, for this work, there are different works designed to acoustic analysis to obtain temporal, spectral, and spectral measurements. And in, in addition to the use of commercial system for elaborate, elaboration of a databases for diagnosis. And the proposed solution, we started with the extracting the acoustic parameters for a bank of recordings provided by the INR. And the recordings were processed in a prep. And the, um, this was followed by a statistical analysis with the help of the PRISE program, uh, man with test. It was performed to evaluate the significant difference between dependent parameters and a two-way analysis of um, bearing and compare the mean difference between the groups of samples for two independent um, variables. And based on the um, statistical analysis, viruses were um, carried out uh, with a type of classifiers, and each one with a different kernel in, in order to evaluate the, the, the behavior. And um, a questionnaire uh, complement the information provided by the anatomical and physiological uh, variables measure. And the tool is, is based on a self-assessment to quantify the perception of vocal disability. Okay. And for the analysis acoustical parameters, the acoustic analysis include measures, measurements of fundamental frequency, uh, harmonic noise ratio, smooth perceptual peak, and disturbance measurement in frequency and uh, amplitude. Uh, within the study group, where uh, there were 38 subjects of which uh, 19 were healthy and 19 of them were patients who suffer uh, from some condition of different origins such as uh, organic, which can be uh, acquired, congenital, or uh, neurological. And functional, which may be some types of, type of, of dysphonia, and a laryngeal hyperfunction. Um, uh, for the selection of the classifier, the database was uh, divided into 70% uh, for training, 15 for validation, and 15 for test. Uh, randomly selected. Tests were performed with different classifiers, such as a, a backpropagation neural network, uh, support vector machine, logistic regression, trees, discriminant, um, need base, uh, k-native neighbor, and ensemble. So then, the following graph were obtained present uh, representing the distribution of the measurement obtained from the processing of the recordings in which it can be seen that in the difference parameters there it's marked the difference between the groups of healthy and uh, with patients with uh, abatology. And it was take as uh, appropriate to use in, in a classifier. And as a part of the qualifier test uh, results, the following table presents the results obtained from the training of neural network backpropagation with different cross entropy uh, values configured, obtain a maximum value of 
a hundred percent of accuracy and a minimum minimum value of 77 and uh, an average value of 96 percent. And the next table presents the results of the four classifier with the best performance in, in terms of accuracy, like um, key native neighbor presented an accuracy of um, 97 percent. Although assailants were tasted an average accuracy of 92.1% uh, was obtained at the best combination, but the high cost in response time and training uh, training time ranges must be considered. Despite um, the high percentage of or precision, the speed uh, prediction of uh, to um, 250 OBS per second uh, being an application that requires him to do work online. It would decide to use uh, the um, the back propagation neural network. And uh, OK, and in conclusion, the, um, the back propagation neural network has uh, training costs among the best. Uh, besides, once the, the best weights were found, the, the test time and, and computational requirements were minimal. So uh, it was chosen as a part of the phreniatric system. And a non invasive voice measurement system during the phonation to detect early voice production anomalies was developed. And, and the system is based on on the analysis of uh, sustained vocalization. It can be used as a medical first attention tool for file work. And in future work, um, our sample could be used or contrasted with the Spanish data set um, if available. And, and yeah. Um, Special thanks for uh, the authors. Uh, thanks to uh, the engineer Eladio, and it's here, and the engineer Nora, Daniela, and yeah, this is the reference. And this is all for me. And thanks for for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much, Laura. Mm. And now, uh, if you have some questions from the attendees, please. Either uh, raise your hands or use the chat, please. Okay. Uh, okay. Laura, I have a question. Yes? Is there any question? OK, I have a question, Laura. What is the most important consideration or most important considerations during the recordings of voice? What do you consider is uh, very important so that the, the recordings can be uh, used in this kind of classification or what can affect the most? Well, um, what? Yeah. Um, I think uh, the the, um, maybe could be the the environment or the equipment or the position of the subject the mm, no I don't think the, the, the position in must be the the, um, the, the uh, 
or the microphone, I don't know, the position of the microphone, is it important? Yeah, the, the microphone, yeah, th there would be a microphone and, and, and the place, then the, we need to control it, um, the, the place. The place when when you um, take the the recorder mm -hmm. and yeah the microphone. Uh -huh. What is is there any special characteristic in the in the room that you are going to uh, take the recordings? Anything that um, must be compulsory in the room? I think there is a control noise. Okay. This is, I think, this is uh, the first, uh, the first is the most important in, to control. And, and the patient, we need to be um, quiet and, and stable. Okay, thank you very much, Ana Laura, for your presentation. And uh, we are on time, so we have to continue with our third. Thanks, uh, Ana Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's continue with uh, our fourth uh, paper. And uh, this is with Alicia Guadalupe. Alicia, can you share your presentation, please? Hello, do you hear me? Yes. yes <laughs> Sorry. It was a technical problem. Uh, <laughs> okay. Are you seeing my screen? No, no. Oh, yes, it's coming. So let's wait a few seconds. Okay, thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Alicia Lasciano. I'm a PhD student in the Computer Science and Technology at Monterrey. I'm going to introduce uh, EGG Motor Imaginary Signal Classification Comparative Using Mature Learning Algorithms. My colleagues are Alicia. my... Uh, wait, wait, hmm. Alicia. We cannot see your screen yet. Ah, okay. We can okay, hear you, okay. but uh, we cannot see your slides. Okay, I'm going to try again. I th think it was okay. <laughs> I know what happened. <laughs> okay, now? Uh, no yet, Alicia. Are you seeing my slides? No. Okay. Uh, we can see you. Okay. Ah, yes, ready. Now we can see your slide. Excellent. Okay, uh, let's uh, continue <laughs> with Alicia, please. Thank you. Well, I'm going, I'm uh, introducing myself. <laughs> My name is Alicia Lascano. I'm a PhD student in competence science in technology at Monterey. I'm going to talk about EGG motor imaginary signal classification, a cooperative using some mature learning algorithms. First, we send the basis of the research through a short introduction. In this introduction, will be some concepts like EG and machine learning mechanisms, thus an example of application of different algorithms. Then we're going to review the methodology that we follow. And finally, the result of this project will allow us to give a conclusion of this project. EGG or electroencephalography is a recording of the representation of brain electrical activity and is obtained by placing the electrodes on the surface of the skull. In the image, can be appreciated the classical distribution of electrodes skull 1020 system. This division by electrode is called channel. For this project are uh, 64 channels available. The channels are associated to diverse tasks like brain activity, such as consciousness of sleepness. In these are likeness the motor area associated record channels. 
The frequency bars and classi are the classification of the brain electric activity measured through the channels. These frequency bands are called alpha, delta, delta, gamma, and nu, and they work in order of 0.5 hertz to above 50 hertz. These are going to work uh, for determining movement tension, that is the imagination of performing a task that involves movement, so grasping or stomping without actually performing the movement. The MI has been a fundamental part of the development of assistive rehabilitation technologies like BCIs. Here are diverse channels and some of the record channels of the, our available data set that we are talking for. The mature learning uh, algorithms can be classified as supervised learning, unsupervised and reinforcement learning, and each uh, types have different learning objectives like classification or task classification, regression, clustering, compression, or control. Uh, these algorithms have tools like neural networks, um, Bayesian network, decision trees, among others. And these are can be classified through a family. The difference between each family rely on their mathematical method for classify or how they compute the data. Bayesian classifiers is a family of simple, for example, a simple of probabilistic classifiers based on applied by strength with a strong independence of associations between features, that is the reason they are called naive. The methodology that we're full, we talk the inf we take the information corresponding of a raw signal of a represented sample of fissionet data sets composed of the information of the upper leaf, moving, imaginary, and baseline tasks of 10 subjects and the FC channel. Of the for, uh, 54 channels available in the original data, it was chosen the FC channel by its location in the brain area associated with the mirror, like we've seen before. Then in the feature extraction among the different methods that exist, it was chosen some time feature, uh, time domain features, and the calculation of energy bands. In the feature selection, uh, we use the MRM algorithm, which be the title further, then comes uh, the classification uh, of the data and the result matrix was uh, fed in diverse algorithms like uh, decision trees, super vector machines, key and neighbor, linear discriminant and analysis, quadratic discriminant and analysis, naive base, linear regression, and ensemble. The database. Fission and motor imaginary data set is a collection of uh, 109 subjects with uh, 14 experimental runs, four tasks, actual trials, uh, two tasks of baseline, one with eyes open, one with eyes closed, and two trials of uh, tasks uh, them that correspond to the movement of the upper limbs and the lower limbs, grasping the hands and the feet. Uh, with uh, two segmentation, what with the um, uh, intention or imaginary movement, and what with the actual task, with a duration of three minutes uh, each one. We are going to use only the information of the upper limbs. The data set was purposed using the GLAB plugin for MATLAB uh, that read each file of, the, of this data set. They remove the baseline to eliminate signal compensation with provide a new reference. Uh, applies a line noise filter of uh, 60 hertz to remove the, the noise connect caused by connected assistance to electric gas supply and a high pass filter of 0.5 hertz to correct the baseline. The feature extraction, among um, there are many extraction, uh, EGG feature extraction techniques that are divided by their domain like a book activity that is a spike associated to an event, time, frequency, or a combination of both. In this project, we use time domain feature extraction techniques. One, PSD, that is a rate which motor units are triggered. Two, channel entropy, a measure of uncertainty and represent the knobs a bit necessary to represent a certain information of the signal. The spectral entropy is a measure of spectral power distribution. Describe well let transform that this is the composition of the signal in basic functions by contraction, expansion of their equation and the power bands. Um, this will allow us to distinguish between um, motor, and imaginary, and the different uh, proposed classes. There are two.
In the feature selection, due to the many features and information that can be extracted, there are necessity to select the features that improve the trained performance of the different algorithms. The feature selection allows this. Um, there are different approaches of feature selection, manual selection, statistical selection, filter selection, probabilistic, and methoristics. In the filter selection is found the algorithm used in the present that is called MRM, minimum redundancy, maximum relevance. Minimum redundancy, maximum relevance, the redundant data with the database and maximizes the relevant information to classify. The filters are selected by set on their intrinsic characteristics, which determine the relevance on discriminant powers, reduce the redundant data, uh, select the top ranking features by set on their metallic and distance with our maximized or the pairwise correlation are minimized. How this works? Uh, subset or relevant subset uh, says uh, the, among the all features are um, minimal optimal as a characteristic or a relevant feature and uh, distinguish a useless feature or relevant subset or relevant feature. Here are the general process of EGG signal classification. Um, there are the pre-processing uh, pre stage of the EG route signal where the features are extracted and they are uh, fitted into the classifiers. There are the different classifiers that we are mentioning, decision tree, linear discriminant, register regression, quadratic discriminant, a base, per vector machines, in error and ensemble. And uh, for example, the super vector machines uh, is an algorithm with a kernel approach. A kernel approach is a super vector that helps to separate classes in a hyperplane. And uh, KNN is a family classifies new values based on similarity. This uh, classifies allows to classify between inactivity and movement as an output. This is our uh, row signal versus the, uh, the results part. These are the methodology and these are the results that we are obtaining. This is the uh, signal with the purposes set where we are going to eliminate the base. Uh, we are going to keep a new baseline. Here can be appreciated. Here are the PSD for the task. In previous works of EGG classification, it's mentioned that the relation between imaginary and motor signals can contribute to the performance of a BCI. And the figure has portrayed the PCA of two tasks, baseline, imaginary, and movement for the upper limbs. And it observed that the movement and imaginary uh, task could integrate the movement class without compromising and equally to a binary classification, reducing the computational cost in the classification step. The feature selection rank. Uh, in the imaging can be appreciated the rank of the most important feature that extracted for the system. There are the Shannon entropy and the discrete web transform. And this information has uh, the different approach of the classification of the system. This is because not all the features extracted allow to classify to classify in the same way EEG signals. There are the relevance for the system. We are going to uh, see this and discuss this further because here are the cl uh, classification with mature learning algorithm uh, comparison. Here is the uh, accuracy of using all the available features with it uh, can be a 100 of the accuracy of the training set in a quadratic discriminant analysis, but using a pair of relevant features, it could achieve uh, uh, accuracy close to the one with using all the features. The quadratic discriminant analysis and the naive base has this, uh, uh, this characteristic. The select pair of features has a similar performance in the confusion matrix for the predicted classes, the chain on uh, entropy and discrete wave, uh, discrete wave transform pair of uh, feature that it's the more relevant for the system and the performance of the training time and prediction speed of the pair of features is varied in terms of computational cost and prediction speed. The conclusions. 
is the machine learning algorithms with the highest accuracy are the quadratic discriminant analysis and the binary algorithms. The prediction and classification tasks became difficult for super vector machines and key and algorithms. A higher accuracy can be achieved using just a pair of features instead of all the features, and the use of redundant pairs of features for the system lowers accuracy and highs the misclassification costs. For further work, are planned to use more of the database, another type of characteristic, and feed it into a uh, neural network to predict or to do this classification. That's all, and I'm open for questions. Thank you. Okay, Alicia, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, do we have any question from attendees, please? You can raise your hand or you can write your question on the chat too. There are no questions in the chat. There are, exactly. OK. Uh, Alicia, I have a question. It's a very little detail, but I saw in your um, slides, uh, I think it was six or seven. Okay. Um, you showed when you are pre-processing your data, you mentioned mm -hmm. that you use a, a notch filter at 60 hertz. Um, was it a 60 or 50? Because the database comes from Fisionet, isn't it? Yes, 60, uh -huh. because it's a, a power supply in the United States, and the oh, United okay. States has a power supply of 60. Uh, Europe has 50, but uh, this database is from USA. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And um, from the, from the uh, proposals that you have, um, what what was what was your um, what did you based on your proposals for the methods that you are working or you are presenting today? Uh, well, there are uh, works of uh, BCIs, uh, another works and another um, uh, kind of uh, structured features. The relevance is one: the database uh, is not a database uh, that is highly used and there are not uh, entropy used uh, in this uh, kind of uh, way and there are the the information available of the channels if this difference uh, in the further work is proposed uh, change the the channel uh, and another type of uh, uh, Distracted feature, if this impact in the performance of the classification algorithms, also try another algorithm like um, neural networks to improve classification on to determine if it's possible uh, the, imagine, uh, the imaginary, the movement, and the inactivity or baseline type of movement. Okay. And um... Did you find any difference in, in how many electrodes did you make the uh, the processing and classification? In this uh, in in this work one, but I'm applying the study for uh, six uh, ch uh, channels that are located in the motor uh, motor area, and uh, we are trying to see uh, in further work if and one, two channels that are located outside of the motor area are uh, affected by this, by this information. Okay, which was your specific location in which you analyzed? FC3. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. We have a question here on the chat and okay. it's from Laura Yvonne Garay. And she is asking you, which do you prefer, NB or QL, according to the performance in your specific application? I think that uh, NB has uh, another type of characteristic for the information. Uh, for this uh, information, it will be uh, better the QDA, but 
in further analysis, I think the night base it will be a better analysis. Okay, thank you very much for your answers. Alicia, any other question from the attendees? I have a question. Yes, please, go on. Um, do you, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, do you mention it that the KNN and SVM classifiers attain the lower performance in terms of accuracy? And I know that you use some uh, different kernels for SVM classifiers and and different distance metrics for KNN classifier, and, and also you get you got very uh, low accuracy compared to another uh, classifiers. So my question is, uh, do you use some um, tuning uh, method to to get uh, some tuning parameters, for example, the numbers of key neighbors neighbors for the KNN or the um, parameters of uh, the so-called gamma and C parameters for the, the kernel of the SVM classifier. Do you use some tuning methods to get these parameters or, or just uh, just put uh, some parameters and, and, and check the results for, for tests and, and trial and error? Uh, no, I'm not use uh, tuning methods for ESVM. Uh, that is uh, uh, the the uh, a good proposal to do in uh, further uh, try if uh, tuning uh, uh, allows to refine the result of SBM. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, in this type uh, with this type of information, uh, SBM could be uh, mm, uh, not a high performance of the classification, but I could try uh, tuning in a further work. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Samuel, for your question. Any other question, please? Okay, I see no more questions. So thank you very much, Alicia, for your presentation. Thank you. And let's continue. OK, our next presentation is from Rodrigo Late Prates. Uh, let me know if I am pronouncing correctly your name, please, Rodrigo. And if you are ready, could you please share your presentation? Yes, just a moment, please. OK. Okay, we can see your presentation. Can you change the slide just to make sure that we are going to have no problems okay. changing the, the slides? Excellent. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me present you. Okay, this uh, work is semantic segmentation of mammograms using pre-trained deep neural networks and is going to be presented by Rodrigo Leite Prates. Okay, thank you. Um, hi everyone. Uh, again, my name is Rodrigo Leite Prates. You pronounce this correctly. Uh, I have two doctoral advisors, Professor Wilfrido Gomes Flores and Professor Wagner Pereira. I am a doctoral student from UFRJ Biomedical Engineering Program. Mm, this is the overview of this presentation. And I start talking about the objective of this study that is to improve the performance of computer ad designed CAD tools with the application of deep learning techniques in the context of mammogra mammographic image segmentation. And to do that, we evaluate the generalization capacity of CNN models. And in this process, we establish a methodology for the segmentation of, mem of the mammography to improve the extraction of its anatomical regions, such as breast and pectoral muscle. 
we know that mammography is the most important tool for the breast cancer detection. That's a disease that, if not detected early, can lead to fatal outcomes. And the World Health Organization recommends the use of this technique, the mammographic screening, because it's possible to identify suspicious changes in the tissues before the symptoms. But the specialist has a challenging task that can make this professional uh, uh, this uh, professional analysis susceptible to errors. And these CAD systems are usually used to distinguish between malignant and benign lesions, indicate the suspicious areas, improve the accuracy of the radiologist or specialist, and to decrease the number of biopsies performed unnecessarily. And in this CAD system pr processing, uh, the first and this, there is a first step and, and this is a, a, a important step is the mammogram segmentation in representative anatomical regions. Regions like the breast, the pectoral muscle, and for this problem, the image background. This is because pectoral muscles has similar texture and characteristics with the breast, the breast parenchyma, and the background due to the presence of artifacts such as labels and wedges. And for the CAT system, the removal of both parts is important in the pre-processing -pre stage. And before deep learning, the traditional CAT systems usually incorporate prior domain knowledge into handcraft features, features extracted from each pixel of the image. But these features are specific to the sample used, and therefore this techniques has less generalization capacity. And it's natural that for the improvement and automatizing of this process, the use of deep learning techniques for the segmentation step. Because these neural networks can actually automatically learn features with characteristic level of abstraction. And some CNN architectures like UNET and SEGNET are commonly used in biomedical image segmentation problems. And, but there are different implementation, possible implementation of UNET and SEGNET architectures. And each variation can present different results. And that's a, a feature that we, we are exploring in this study. And we are using act currently five CNN architectures for the segment segment for the segmentation of the anatomical regions in the breast, four variations of UNET and one for SEGNET. And when I say variations, we get the CNN architecture, CNN architecture, and we change the backbone of this uh, CNN. And we compare the result of the CNN architectures with a traditional approach using a uh, one layer MLP network, one hidden layer MLP network. And for that, we, we use two public data sets combined to evaluate for the evaluation of each model. And about the, the data sets we are using this problem, we, we select the MIAS data set and use all, all 322 scanned MLO images. That is the image where you can see the breast and the pectoral muscles. And we, you will select the impressed data sets with more than 400 digital image. But for this data set, we select just the just 20, 201 MLO images because the bilateral cranial caudal images or CC images, you usually just see the breast. And to need to segment the pectoral muscles and to reduce class imbalance, you just select for the breast that I said, 
just half of this base. And about the CNN architectures, we have considering the zero padding layer, batch normalization, concatenation, convolutions, and up sample operations. You have this table with the number of layers and number of parameters for each data set. And now talking about the training steps, we first align the mammographic images to the left. We do a normalization with zero mean and unit variance. And to train each model, we use cross entropy cost function and other delta adaptive learning rate optimizer. And we did all these steps using Python tree language with TensorFlow and Keras. And to, to compare the, 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 the architectures, we evaluate in, just in the test set using four metrics, dice score, dice coefficient, or F1 score, Jacquard coefficient or intersection of union, and false positive and false negative heights. And all metrics were calculated as a average for the three classes and we use cross validation with five folds. And the final result is the wet is the wage average of these five folds. And we did a statistical analysis to determine the validation of our experiments using ANOVA test and 2K test. After the CNN training, we, we train a traditional MLP method, a traditional neural network, where we use handcrafted feature extracted from texture intensity and spatial information from each pixel. And we have four steps, beginning with the pre-processing of each image to, re to remove speckling and contrasting. And we did the contrast enhancement that's just a uh, and uh, histogram normalization, we extract, we extract a total of 243 features from each pixel. And before the training, we do a feature dimensionality reduction. And after the training, to refine the segmentation, we apply techniques like roly filling and active contour. Now, starting with the results and discussion, uh, we see the training time for each CNN architecture. And these values were obtained after a specific value of Jacquard metric. And you can see that as expected, the network with more wage parameters or layers, we have a longer train time. The only exception is the mobile net unit because of your DPY separable convolution technique. And for the longest model train time, you have the VGG network. After that, we analyze the overall segmentation performances from each architecture, where we put in blow both the best values for each metric. And you can see that all, all networks obtained values from Jacquard or DICE greater than 0.9. And all UNET models show it slightly better values in most metrics compared to the SEGNET. And the best segmentation performer was obtained from mobile UNET UNET model. And comparing the results of all models, including mobile UNET UNET, we have values similar to those obtained in the literature. After that, we did a statistical analysis where we did a pairwise comparison from each model, as you can see here in this table. And this analysis revealed that most comparison did not present significant statistical difference, but UNET architecture, except UNET itself or vanilla UNET, 
were better than Segnet. Then we compare the best results from the mobile net unit with the traditional neural network. And you can see a significantly better result from all metrics from a mobile net unit that was expected from the literature that we know that CNN models are usually better than traditional models. And finally, we see the results from the segmentation using each model where the first two rows we trained each model with just one data set and the last two rows we trained each model with both combined data sets. And you, what you can see here is that HasNet UNet and mobile net UNet was were the models with the that did the less the, that have less mistakes in this in the contour of each part, the breast and the pectoral muscle. After all these experimental results, what you can say about this, this work is that the main contributions is about the, a comparative study of different variations of UNET to, to the segmentation of breast regions in public data sets and the development of a methodology for segmentation of mammography to improve the extraction of anatomical regions. And in the conclusion, uh, you we can see that for the improvement of a CAD systems, the performance of the segmentation step is essential. And all process must be optimized, including the computational cost. And to, to check that, we select and evaluate five different neural networks and compare that with a traditional models using two public data sets. We check that mobile net unit was the model with the best results, and it's why its model could be a potential candidate for semantic segmentation of anatomical regions in a fully fully automated end-to-end -end CAD system. And for future works, we think of include more images such as those found in the DDSM data set. You can train more models and we want to incorporate the classification of breast density and, an, and anomalous region classification as micro classifications or masses. And that's it for me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Rodrigo, for your presentation. Is there any question from the attendees, please? Okay, I cannot see any question. There are no questions in the chat. Okay, I have a question, Rodrigo. Uh, in your system, is there any restriction about the quality of the image that you can use? Actually, no. Uh, what I did is um, check each image and discard the images where I can't see, for example, uh, the, the some parts of the pectoral muscle or where I found in the image background a lot of labels or wedges that mm -hmm. even my preprocessing stage can't remove. And for this, this kind of problem, I remove the image. Ah, okay, I, I, I was uh, talking about that. What was your cri criteria to eliminate those? So it was the labels or... Uh, the presence of something else. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes, what was your criteria to eliminate them? You mentioned some, but what was um, 
I mean, how many characteristics did you take in order to eliminate them? Because you did okay, it okay. yourself. So it was your eye that de de decided which ones to eliminate. What was your criteria? Okay, uh, for example, uh, in in breast data set, uh, there are some images like um, cranial caudal image that I can see and this is a normal situation, I can see the pectromas. Okay, I eliminate all these images from this, for this study. Uh, and the odd, from the MLO images, I check, uh, for example, there are some images that there are a lot of um, labels with the name of a person or something like that, that I try to eliminate, out of, that, that I try to uh, clean, clean this, this label automatically with I don't know uh, a filter or something like that when I couldn't do that I eliminate manually that's an example okay and something else uh, if you use any other database that has different characteristics maybe in the resolution pixels mm -hmm. contrast um, do you need uh, some to do you need to do something else with the pre-processing? Yes, uh, we did. Uh, in, I don't know if this is the, the, the only way to, 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 to call, but it's a future-wise uh, normalization where I take all the images from, the, from a data set or the combination of data set and check the, the brightness of each pixels and I, I do a normalization and then I divide for this value. It's a way to normalize the brightness of each images. Uh, it's a one step and I do another odd, other steps to eliminate um, the background to, uh, or can I say that, to reduce the image because each neuron actor has a specific uh, image, uh, his uh, size input, and I have to do all these things before the, the training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And what was the percentage of um, when you separated for training and testing? What was the okay, percentage? 70% okay. um, for training and 50 for the valid validation, 15 for the training and in cross validation. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. Uh, we have a question in the chat. Uh -huh. okay. Let me read it. Okay, we have a question from Laura Ivonne Garay and she asks, how long the training step for this mobile net unit? The structure was reused, but not the pre-trained weights. Yes, we, you, you, we did. Uh, we get the image net uh, weights and did uh, pre-train it, or yeah, we get pre-trained uh, segmentation architectures, and we use the ImageNet, uh, get the weights from the ImageNet, and train using the data sets that I present here, and you uh, and training with this this way, uh, the mobile net unit takes um, ten to fifteen minutes to just one training with these 500, approximately 500 of images. Uh, I, I already did the training from the DSM that has 1700 images. And okay, I have to, I need to change my notebook because I can't train with this amount of images. But uh, from uh, 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 just, just 500 of images is really fast. Uh, I take just to 10 to 15 minutes to train in a, GeForce uh, GPU. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Rodrigo, for your answer. Anyone else would like to ask to Rodrigo? Okay, I see no more questions. Okay, thank you very much, Rodrigo, for your presentation. Okay. And let's continue.
Thanks, Rodrigo. OK, we are going to continue with our last presentation. And uh, I would like to ask Rafael Bayaré to share the presentation, please. I already give permission to Rafael, but I don't know. I don't see in the list of moder moderators, so. No, I, I don't see him. He says that he does not have access. Mm, OK, let me let me check. OK. I already give. Oh, yes. Uh, I can yes. Hello, okay. thank you very much. Hi, Rafael. Let me introduce you. Thanks. OK. Rafael eh, Bayare Mancilla is going to present the paper Temperature Prediction Based on Artificial Neural Networks Linear Regression with LWIR Sensor for the Study of Diabetic Foot. It's all yours, Rafael. Thank you very much. Is it visible at this moment? Yes. yes, we can see it. Thank you very much. So welcome. I am Rafael Bayare and I will present our letter paper, which is a temperature prediction based on artificial artificial uh, neural network, linear regression with an, a long wave infrared sensor for the study of diabetic food. Um, I would like to remark that this paper is a collaboration between the Automatization Research Center of Nancy in France and in Mexico by the Research and Advanced Studies Center. So as a brief background of our problem is that diabetes mellitus is a problem that continues spreading worldwide every year according to the diabetes, uh, Diabetic Atlas that is um, usually published every two years. Also, by a, a, a paper published in Lancet, which is one of the most prestigious journals in medicine, uh, estimate that around 15 to 25 percent of the patients will de will develop ulcers at the sole of the foot uh, without any any kind of a uh, complication that are presented before. That's why we focus our investigation, our researchers, in the early di early diagnosis of diabetic foot. So as uh, technology uh, technology advances, we have medical imaging that uh, traditional techniques such as X-ray, tomography, or mag magnetic resonance uh, let us to observe anatomical uh, structures inside the, the members, but this is more oriented to the corrective medicine. However, in the other hand, thermal imaging let us to observe the physiological um, process many times in real time. So, also these sensors, which are uh, long wave infrared sensors, which is um, the one that is only uh, useful for temperature prediction in, in human, are becoming more accessible each year by year. However, some challenges are remaining, remaining uh, around this kind of sensors that usually uh, by the producer, they are not characterized. It's not always possible to predict a temperature, but most of the times we ca we can retrieve two kind of data. We can retrieve a false color image, as we can see in the right side, or usually just a data matrix of digitization, the digitalization information that is not useful a priori to understand what is going on. So also as background of this research, uh, several years we take for, for uh, carry out the characterization of this kind of sensor that we used to have in our laboratory. Also because we are employing for a telem telemetric monitoring system. So as background of this research, in 2017, we carried out our first characterization of uh, this uh, low cost sensor, Lepton 2.5 of a FLIR company, which we made a characterization with humid phantoms, also known as black body, in a semi-controlled environment in this acrylic box, which uh, we used as infrared energy uh, filter. 
However, at that moment, at the publication of that uh, job, we found that also we had a kind of erratic uh, characterization when we use also uh, thermocouples as reference to retrieve that uh, temperature prediction using only digitalization information that is uh, that can be um, retrieved directly from the sensor. One year later, we also perform a cross sensor characterization. It means that we compare that uh, mathematical equation that uh, we got at 2017 versus the uh, Fluke T32 industrial purpose camera. It's, a, it's also a thermal imager. And uh, we also um, took some uh, pictures data, uh, radiometric data of volunteers on the sole of the foot to compare what is the performance of our low cost sensor compared to the industrial purpose camera. However, we found that at least at the very beginning of the experiments, we had in average a difference of half degree. However, after uh, continuously a time of uh, more than 10 minutes, we found that our error increased more than one degree. This problem was solved later, uh, introducing a new board to the system that prevent that our sensor would hit at the moment of, of uh, operating. However, still the data was very inconsistent at that moment. So the purpose for this paper is to perform a second characterization, exploiting this time a linear, percep a linear perceptron for, of course, linear prediction in, the, in such way that also we had a better controlled condition, I mean, uh, experimental with a very controlled environment, that the data retrieved of the industrial camera would serve as input to our system in order to, to um, predict the temperature of our low cost sensor, but not also to get only a linear prediction, but find the best fitting model that could reduce the error of the original model. In this slide, we can observe the features of, the, of both imagers that usually are very similar also between several models. However, it's very important to resemble that the, the resolution in pixels, <clears throat> the spatial resolution, is at least uh, three times lower than the industrial camera purposes, but we believe that with a correct uh, characterization that at the end what we are interested in is to retrieve a thermal uh, matrix that can support quantitative information could not be a limitation if we, are per if we perform a correct characterization. So uh, here I present a, a schematic of our calibration system that we carry out with a thermostatic bath in such way that the lower face of our radiator, our black body was in continuously touched with the water level and the external face was uh, directly to air in which we fixed both images at 20 uh, centimeters far away, but also we um, uh, we have a thermometer, a gold standard thermometer inside the level water in such way that we could uh, ensure that the temperature registered at least by the uh, industrial purpose camera match exactly with the same uh, temperature that we could register in the thermometer in such way that usually in average it was one minute of stabilization and every two minutes we took uh, a picture or, or a radiometric data capture um, in order to, to let to stabilize, stabilize the water. The Phantom, the black body was also homemade, it's a uh, uh, black painted uh, with matte texture aluminum with size of 10 by 10 centimeters and the reason we did it is uh, we, I mean, the reason that we painted in, in black matte, uh, matte texture is also to avoid the, to avoid the reflection of the infrared uh, energy. That also was a, a, a mistake that was done with the humid uh, phantoms that was carried out um, some years ago in the first characterization. The data analysis, so we, re we match 
the temperature registered with the first imager versus the digitalization information that we could retrieve from Lepton 2.0. In this graph, it is perceptible to see that the line has a linear um, a linear behavior that is described by this equation in, in which it also contains a slope that which uh, in, liter in literature usually we can find as a bias. With that said done, uh, we use the uh, lepton 2.0 uh, uh, sorry, lepton 2.5 uh, radiometric data that at this moment it is not useful for the user to 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 understand what is the temperature measured. It's just only 14-bit data that is not useful. So that data will be used as input into our very simple system. It's a perceptron single layer that also we didn't use uh, an activation function because our purpose is not to classify. Our purpose is just only to predict the temperature as uh, using as reference at uh, industrial camera in such way that at the end uh, we will have a linear prediction with a bias and then we will compare the first model with the second one. But also to fit to, I mean, to find the, the, the best fitting model, we use the gradient descent method based on the mean square error. It means that every the gradient, uh, gradient uh, descent method will iterate, and by each iteration that we will uh, perform, the, uh, the mean square error will be calculated by the reference, which is the uh, data retrieved from the camera, but also which is based with the gold standard thermometer, which it was inside the, the camera of the water, versus the predicted temperature of the low cost sensor. And uh, each, each, um, each iteration will correct uh, every time until find a local minimum of the error. In such way, we will uh, ensure that our, our model is the best uh, fitting mathematical equation. Also, we carry out a validation using the same database from the cross-characterization uh, cross performed in 2018, in which we had 15 volunteers in our laboratory. None of them had, uh, none of them were considered, I mean, age, gender, or background of diabetes. Since our purpose is just only to characterize sensors uh, and to retrieve finally a mathematical model. So it is intended our perspective, of course, to use database of diabetic uh, people or even diabetic food uh, images. But at the moment, it's just only a, a paper that describes a characterization, a cross uh, characterization between uh, uh, thermal images. So as a result, here I present our model obtained by the gradient descent method, which is the most uh, fitted uh, equation. And here in the second one, I present the first uh, model obtained in 2017 that also we can find that uh, it had a quadratic nature. Meanwhile, this had um, a linear, uh, linear nature, of course, due to the model that we use that is the perceptron single layer. However, still at this moment remains if really this linear model is a best option or a quadratic is a best option. So it's it's simple to to answer because if we compare uh, both, both data in the average of the database, we found that after 17 times, 17 iterations, the minimum error retrieved by our um, gradient descent method was just 0.02 uh, degree, just ten, the 10th tenth, uh, tenth part of the error of the original model. This, uh, this data was compared, and this data was compared in by the by nine uh, areas, different areas, which uh, fits to the monofilament testing. It's a, it's a is a testing in uh, frequency, and we took the average of these nine areas. So in, in such way, we compare each model. So we find finally in this table that the error was reduced at least 10 times. If we, co we compare both uh, performances in each region, one, uh, one to nine, we find that in the same scale, 
the error of our new model is such so small that it is not possible to to compare if we fit both uh, results in the same scale. However, we can observe for the first uh, model retrieved in 2017 that also we have erratic averages uh, behavior, so that could also answer why our data were not consistent at the beginning with uh, gold standard uh, measurements. Finally, just for conclude uh, this this brief presentation, is that of course our our new better controlled environment, based with a gold standard references, contribute a lot to get a better performance, a, a, a result that much much better that fits much better with a industrial camera purposes that also was based on uh, the measurement of a gold standard thermometer. But also the gradient descent method was very important to perform in order to obtain the most fitting mathematical equation uh, without the gradient, gradient uh, descent method. It is, yes, of course, it is possible to retrieve a mathematical model, but it is not ensured that the error will be reduced as uh, to the minimum. So the average error also was corrected by almost quarter of degree respect the first model, which is a is a biggest step for us because as perspective, we can see this image is the prototype that was developed at that time. It is intended in the future years to perform clinical uh, validation and also to uh, make valid our studies, not in, only in difference, temperature differences, uh, qualification study, but also to support a quantitative study in temperature defense, uh, differences and also automatic segmentation, which the numerical data is very important. So this new model will be used uh, in, the, in the future for improve the segmentation based also in temperature differences, which is the main expertise of our le uh, research line involved in this paper. So finally, I just only want to uh, thank uh, thank you for your patience, time, and attention. Thank you very much, Rafael, for your presentation. Let's see if we have some questions, please. Uh, I don't see. Oh yes, please. We have a question from Arturo Vera. Please. Thank you. I have a question concerning the resolution of your camera. Do you think that the resolution of your camera is enough for this kind of application? Yes, because for this, specifically for the medical a medical application, there are standards that are uh, introduced by the outdoor ring in 2018 that um, describes all the standard of temperatures related by different uh, areas of the body. Specifically for the foot, it is very well known that at least 0 0.1 of difference between area, areas is, is when one decimal of degree in, in Celsius is enough to detect, detect uh, uh, temperature differences. Also, another kind of research and also related to quant uh, quantitative thermography uh, described by Van Etten, described that also the, the, the temperature differences between uh, pairs, is between feet, is reported as 2.2 degree. So the resolution of our camera, despite the spatial resolution, I am talking about the thermal resolution, it is enough to detect these uh, these differences. Also supporting the quantitative studies is, is important by, uh, based on the segmentation that we can improve the contrast of temperature differences in order that at least visually the physician or the user or uh, any specialist can observe clearly that exist at least in the, on the sole of the foot uh, abnormal temperature that could alert the physician. Okay, thank you very much. Rafael, I have a question. Yes. Uh, how is it made this um, analysis in clinic now? 
Yeah, at the moment, uh, uh, it is based on a protocol uh, known as passive thermography. It means that uh, when there is a, a patient that has a background of diabetes, but has not as yet a background of diabetic food, which is different because diabetic food is a complication, it is a candidate to perform these uh, thermographic studies, infrared thermographic studies, in such way that the patient usually is put on sitting, for example, or lay down on a bed, and the food is is led to cool into environment temperature, usually to 10 to 15 times in order to perform an homogeneous temperature around the volume of the food. That is known as passive thermography. Active thermography is because maybe the users, phys physician or uh, workers that are around the patient could provide, for example, a cooling cream or a heating gun, for example, in order to study how well the food can perform the thermoregulation to back to the normal temperature of the food. But that is very difficult to control. That's why usually we use uh, passive thermography. All, the, all our research line is based on passive thermography in such a way that the temperature of the background or in the room will be the same as the food. In such a way, uh, the first step, of course, is to segment the sole of the food to eliminate that the background temperature that could um, be interference for the, te the temperature that is in our region of interest in such a way that we could contrast just only the areas of the sole of the foot. And now after this step, we can find the, the temperature differences that could alert that if the patient which has background of diabetes will, uh, will develop ulcers by, by vascular disease, ischemia, et cetera, or uh, the temperature is enough homogeneous. Is, I mean, there is no differ, um, a differ, a temperature differences more than a uh, 10th degree. So that is, it's a, it's a very basic, very easy, um, easy very easy uh, uh, experimental setup. That's why that's one of the most benefit of medical uh, infrared thermography. That is not also only used on the foot, but also is used, for example, for arthritis or detection, early detection on breast cancer and uh, many Ill, uh, many different illnesses also. Illness also. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. We have another question. Uh, go on, please, Dr. Laura. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's a very interesting board, uh, Rafael. There is a lot of possibilities of future application of your characterization methods, not just for food. So are you considering a large database of these images? image for automatic analysis with image itself as is in uh, actually actually in um, common using machine learning of deep learning methods what do you think uh, of course and i appreciate a lot this question because um i recently published this year a, a paper on on the journal sensors in which, um, in fact, I don't use any uh, artificial neural network or machine learning or any any kind of these um, uh, algorithms to segment or to predict temperature uh, because it is intended that uh, based on, our, at least for our prototype, to use a embedded system in this prototype in specific is a Raspberry Pi, in which sometimes the computational resources are a limitation. So this, this paper I published in journal, uh, use a very simple criteria that is thresholding in the normalization of data. So answering your, your original question is not. At least I, I can feel proud of that my methods do not require a large database because uh, I am using a thresholding criteria that usually it's uh, dependent also in the protocol acquisition. Usually in medical uh, thermography, the region of interest 
that also will you is the area the region that will provide the useful information for characterization also and prediction usually is the largest area of the captured region in such way that uh, the rest of the interferences for example are um, are removed and uh, and this this procedure these stages do not require robust system however However, it still remains some questions. Uh, here I want to make clear that at least for this paper, we are capturing, or at least not only for diabetic food, I mean, for example, for early diagnosis on, on um, breast cancer. Angular emissivity is a problem. When we are um, capturing images from anatomical structures, angles that are capture it could be a problem for the characterization of course several authors several authors um, uh, approach this problem actually by machine learning that's that was my motivation to start to use ANN as very beginner ex experiment yes to improve the angular emissivity that it's a challenge it's a limitation for infrared imaging However, for, for segmentation, uh, for temperature prediction, at least at, at the normal incidation, uh, no, my algorithms do not require a large database, which is um, which is advantage because also we could use embedded system as for our prototype. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I agree with you that it is not necessary for this purpose. But I was thinking in future, exactly as breast mammography, that is considered one of the hot topics for yeah. for image, for temperature image. Thank you. Thank you to you. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Rafael, for your presentation and your answers. Uh, do you have any other question? Uh, attendees, any comment? Okay, I don't see any other question or participation. So thank you very much, Rafael, for your presentation. And thank you very much to all of you that attended this session. It was a pleasure to have you here. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, we will wait for you tomorrow at three o'clock for the bio session two. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow. Samuel, are you in charge of closing the session? Yes, I'm going to stop the recording, recording, okay. and I'm going to close the session after Excellent. that. Thank you very much, Samuel, for your help in the session. Thank you. See you. See you. <laughs>